Hey folks, Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. On today's video, we're going to do an installation for the jet wash deflector hardware for Yamaha boats. Uh, this will be for 21 footers, 24 footers, and 25 footers from 2020 and newer. Uh, prior years, 2019 and back, are going to have a clip-on design, but 2020 and newer because of the change of the ladder requires special hardware, so today we're going to focus on uh, that particular installation. Uh, this uh, procedure will apply to both 21, 24, 25, doesn't matter what boat you have. Uh, it will exclude 27 footers. Uh, so if you have a 27, unfortunately it will not work for your 27 foot model. But for all the others, it should be the same exact install procedure. So I appreciate you watching and uh, stick with us, got lots to show you. All right, here we go. Get this thing started here. We're gonna do a quick installation. I'm going to show you using some new technology today, hopefully a little bit more immersive demonstration of how to uh, install your jet wash deflector. Be yours truly here doing the install as well as yours truly doing the install. So let's get going. I'll try to open up my mouse here. Let's talk about tools needed. You're going to need a ratchet. You're also going to need a couple of sockets there, so it's a 10 millimeter and an 11 millimeter. Also inside the kit, we've already opened up this package here. We're going to open it up here. I'm going to get some Loctite, some medium blue. Also going to have a uh, 5 16 Allen wrench. Uh, you're going to see a uh, 1 8 inch Allen wrench and a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. Also didn't see this uh, in the bag, uh, or didn't do this in this part of the video, but you're also going to want to add a 10 millimeter, bo 10 millimeter box end wrench. This is going to be one of your uh, mount legs here, the, the rail that goes up on the side of the ladder bracket. Notice that this has a tab that kind of points towards the port side. So we're going to uh, hold this up here to the starboard side that goes there, starboard side rail. Now the opposite is a mirror of that. This is going to be the port side rail. Notice it has a tab that points towards the starboard. That's going to be the rail that goes on the port side of the ladder. We'll set that aside for a second. Next you have your mount legs. These are going to slide up inside the jet wash deflector body. You're going to have two of those. Uh, 21 foot versions have a shorter, 24 foot versions have a longer. And now we're going to pull out some of our mount hardware. You're going to get a flat tab here, a flat plate that's going to have uh, hardware. Uh, there's going to be a bent tab as well. Also going to have hardware. You're going to get uh, two sets, one for the left, one for the right. There's the starboard side bent tab and the starboard side flat plate here. All right, all done. We'll set this aside. Now, First thing we're going to do here, I recommend is to take the ladder. Uh, if it's been used recently, the boat's been used, just take the ladder out, get you a towel, and uh, let the water drain out. It's important so you don't get soaking wet as you're doing this install. The next step you're going to take is to disassemble the hardware uh, from your flat plate and from your bent tab here. We're going to open up the pack of blue Loctite here, and we're going to uh, add Loctite to the nuts just ahead of time. Just so we don't forget this step later, it makes it a lot easier to do when you got two hands free. Uh, you cannot go too heavy with blue Loctite, so go as heavy as you like. Just make sure you've got a good, uh, good thorough patch there all around that nut. I'm going to do it on all four of these nuts here uh, as we are preparing to do our install. Medium blue is easy to break loose. Uh, you do not need heat to break it loose in case you ever decide to do that. One of the things we want to talk about here as we're getting ready to put this mount rail on, notice as I'm describing my fingers here, see how we've got this washer and nut uh, on this side. We want to make sure that the uh, washer and nut kind of slides up on this little tab here. See this little crook right here? It just helps hold things in place. All right, now we're going to install bolt one and bolt two. We're going to put our thick washer in place. We're going to have a second thick washer that's going to go in place. It's important to get this step right. Go ahead and get your washers in place before you put on the flat plate, the flat mount adapter here. Once we put our mount adapter in place, see how we set it up on top of this ledge here? And 
And now we're going to squeeze it together. And you're going to make sure that the bolts pass through. Get my hand out of the way in a second here. There. And the spacers are in between. All right. Now we're going to install a 5 8 washer. A 5 8 washer on this side. Get a lock washer. I'm going to put the lock washer on next. Next lock washer on this side. Now we've got our nuts with the Loctite pre-installed. Just make sure you kind of thread this on just finger tight for now, both sides. Don't torque this down just yet. Just leave it kind of finger tight. Notice how I'm adjusting everything, trying to make sure it's all kind of snugged in place. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Now we're going to disassemble our hardware from this bent tab here. All this hardware is stainless steel, including the bent tab and the flat plate, powder coated, of course. Now, this is important to talk about. See this rail right here? This bent tab is going to sit on top of this rail, and this little weld right here, uh, it's not a precision weld, a precision weld, so sometimes that weld is going to be placed lower or higher. That bar is going to be sitting lower or higher. So this little bent tab is not always going to sit flush. Sometimes it'll have a little angle to it. It's okay as long as it does not collide with the ladder leg as you slide the ladder in and out. Okay. So now we're going to take our bolt. We're going to pass it through. While we're holding the part up, we're going to take our second bolt, pass it through the back side here. It's a little easier to get to this if you put your hand around the back side. Pass the bolt through. Now we're, while we're holding it up, we're going to put our 5 8 washer. Just going to hold that there. We have our lock washer. We have Loctite. We're going to go ahead and put Loctite on that lock nut. Just be careful as you thread this on. Make sure that it threads up nice and easy. Do not cross thread. Finger tight for now. It's important just to kind of let that hang there until we get the other side put on. So now we have our flat washer 5 8 we have our lock washer. And lastly, we're going to put some Loctite on this nut here, and we're going to install. Super important to talk about this. Do not force this nut. If you feel like it's not threading on easily with your fingers, do not force it. Back it back off. Lift the nut over if you need to. If there's a burr or some deformity in the threads that can cause issues if you try to tighten it with a wrench. All right, everything's in place. It's now time to make sure we have it positioned correctly. Notice how we are pushing this back to where this bolt kind of rests in that little crook there. This is going to be sliding forward. I'm going to draw this real quick here. This is going to be sliding forward. We want to make sure that that tab is slid in this direction. Once we have that slid into the right place, once everything is all uh, properly oriented, we'll take our 11 millimeter Allen wrench or socket and our 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, and tighten everything down. One more time while I'm focusing on this right here, I want to make sure that this is seated right there in that crook so that that gives you a definitive position of how far back that's supposed to go that tells you how far back it needs to be that bolt will actually stop itself right on that little crook right there if you can see it better over there a little crook that's just that bolt is there for two purposes to tighten everything up but also to I'm going to help you set that location. All right, tightening everything up, 11 millimeter and 530 seconds. If you feel like there is, uh, it's not pinching completely, so it still has movement, that's okay. You can lock down the back two bolts and lock this bolt here as well, and it's going to be just fine. That spacers are there to uh, make sure that it doesn't have the wrong angle when it's sitting kind of flush up against the side. All right, same step here. 530 seconds and uh, 11 millimeter. Just torque this down firm. Don't have to muscle this.
torque it down just nice and firm between the Loctite and the lock washer. It's not going anywhere. All right, now we're going to work on tightening this nut and bolt here. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter as well as the 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Just tighten this securely. I'm going to tighten this until it draws the face of the mount rail up kind of flush up against the side of the mount ladder there, the, the ladder carrier, I guess we would call it ladder bracket. And you may find that it uh, slightly deforms that washer, and that's okay. You just want to draw that up flush, make sure that it's square up against the face of the ladder. All right. That should be mount rail for the port side completely installed. Just double check everything, make sure it all feels firm. May actually go back and just do a little bit extra snug on this one here just to make sure that I have tightened it all the way down. Those spacers felt like they were a little bit thicker than the last ones we installed, so maybe giving us a little more space than we originally bargained for. But yeah, super tight, nice and firm, good to go. All right, that's going to be it for the port side. We move over to the starboard side now. mount hardware. I'm going to make sure again that this bolt and washer and nut are all mounted properly. One of the things I like to do ahead of time is I'll take my uh, 10 millimeter and my uh, eighth inch allen wrench here. I'll take this this nut and, and uh, bolt here just kind of tighten it down a little bit more uh, before install just to take up some of that room. It just makes it a little bit uh, better as it's sitting on that little crook we talked about. Uh, that gap being a little tighter like that. Notice it's going to go right here on this little crook there. It sits there. That's kind of the, the indicator of where your part needs to rest. When you put it in place, that little bolt is going to stop right on that little crook, and that tells you you've got it in the right place. All right, we're going to disassemble our hardware now just to make sure we can get some Loctite on these nuts. And you have your flat plate and your bent tab. Blue Loctite. It's your friend. Use it liberally. We have four nuts here. So go ahead and do them all four at the same time. A lot easier to do this when you got two hands free. On this one, we're going to install it a little bit different. You may have your own way of doing things once you've done this once or twice or a hundred times if you're a dealer. Uh, I'm going to do this one where we slide the bolt into place up front here, and we're going to do the back side first. So grabbing the bent tab, we'll slide it up and on top of this railing here. And we're going to grab our three-quarter long bolts. Pass those in from the top. One three quarter bolt here, and our second three quarter bolt is going to go here. While we're pinching pressure here, add your five eighths. Going to add your lock washer. And then finally your nut here with the Loctite. Now as I started this one, I kind of felt like it was just a little bit, almost like there was a burr. It just did not feel like it wanted to go on smooth. So after I figured that it might be a little bit burred like that, I just flipped it over. Uh, and then it sl slipped on real nice and smooth. So just try that. You know, if you feel like one's got kind of hard to get on, flip it over. It may be easier. Sometimes it's just a deformity in the threads. All right, same thing here. Add the... Uh, 5 eighths washer, the lock washer, and the nut here with the Loctite. Spin that on finger tight. 
We have our flat plate. Before we install the flat plate, we're going to put our bolt through. These are the same thing, three quarter inch long, quarter twenties, stainless steel. Pass the bolt through. Now, before we put on the flat plate there, we're going to put on the spacer. It's critical that these spacers go in this orientation. You're going to have the spacer in between the rail and the flat plate. All right, now that we've got this in place here, put two fingers on the bolts and slide the flat plate on. And now we're going to take, we're going to make sure that we slide this forward. Super important to make sure that that's split all the way forward. All right, now we're going to do our washer. So we got the five eighths. We have our lock washer. And we have our nut with the Loctite pre-installed. Spin these on finger tight. Good thing about using stainless steel for this is that when you go to disassemble later, if you ever need to disassemble, they come apart relatively easily. Same thing, 5 eighths light washer. We're using our uh, stainless steel light washer here. And then finally our Loctite, uh, pre-applied Loctite stainless steel nut here. These are quarter 20 nuts. All right, once again, making sure that this is pressed and it's going to be pushed in this direction. Once that's in place, now we can begin to tighten everything down. We're going to be using an 11 millimeter, 5 30 seconds, just like we did on the other side. Do not have a torque setting for this year, but again, just being snug and uh, between the lock tight and the lock washer there, it should not loosen. All right, that's the rear secured. Let's move forward now to the, the front here. Tighten everything down. Make sure we get a nice snug fit here. Some of you asking the question, why are those little holes there in the front? There's a little hole right there. We added that as a tie down in case you needed to add any sort of tie down feature. Add a rope, whatever. We, we like to tie things like floats and things like that from time to time. It made a nice point to tie that down. All right, now we're going to work on tightening the little, uh, 1032 screw here, 1 8 inch Allen wrench and a 10 millimeter socket. Just tighten this down until it compresses. We want to make double sure that we are compressing this face uh, up against that flat. So it makes for a nice uh, flat vertical the uh, rail itself is flat vertical up against the, uh, the ladder mount. All right, nice and firm, nice and secure. Let's look at these brackets in the back here. If you notice right here, we've got the uh, bracket installed. It's tight, but there's a slight angle there, and it's okay because, again, these, these welds here are in various places, so sometimes that's going to put that bracket just a little bit different depending on where it's located. And it's totally fine. We've allowed for that. It's part of the reason why it's designed the way that it is. Just slide your ladder in place and make sure you double check the clearance uh, so that uh, you see that that bracket is not touching this, this ladder leg here. If it's not touching, you're good to go. If it is touching, you might want to just take your pair of pliers and a vise and uh, try to straighten that a little bit more. But it's totally fine as long as it's not contacting there. So let's take our jet wash deflector body. As you fold it out of the bag here, you're going to have either a 21 foot version or the black one, which is the 24. Uh, slash 25 foot version. White is the 24 foot version. Uh, excuse me, 21 foot version. Now you notice you've got some mount bolts here. Let me try to highlight those for you. Those mount bolts are going to come out. Should be a uh, M6 uh, 1.0 with a nylock nut. Mount leg is going to go inside the upper portion here of the jet wash deflector body. Notice it's going in from the top. As you read the text there, it's in the top portion, slide it all the way through. It's going to pass down through right here. See how the tip's coming out the end? I want to make sure that we put the locking pin or the uh, mount bolt through that hole. When it comes up the other side there, we're going to have a nylock nut. That nylock nut's going to go on. You're going to want to do this hand tight. 
make sure that you uh, tighten this down with a 10 millimeter wrench. Now that 10 millimeter wrench was not mentioned in the original tool requirements, but uh, it is a good, good idea to have that handy uh, 10 millimeter box end wrench. And uh, during this step, you'll also use the five millimeter Allen wrench that was provided with the kit. Just tighten this down nice and secure, ensuring that you fully engage all of the threads in that nylon portion of the nut. Uh, it's also important to know that that nylon nut can only be used once with the right uh, amount of um, thread holding. If you decide to reuse it after you've taken it off uh, and on a couple of times, just make sure you put a dab of Loctite with it to make sure that uh, it does hold firm. All right, second leg going in the same as the first. Slide it down, line your pin, put on your nylon nut here. Uh, same thing, finger tight. We're going to use the same tools. So uh, 10 millimeter plus the five millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, tighten down snug. Uh, there is no torque value really set for this here. Just want to make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want this bolt coming out while you're using the part. Uh, if you do, potential that you could lose the part. We had that happen to us once on testing, so we don't want that to happen to you. And uh, there we go. Fully assembled. Now, I want to put this on the boat, but before we do that, Let's go ahead and uh, take our locking clevis pins. We want to unlock those first. Uh, see the little locking clevis pin here? I want to just take locking clevis off each end there, just pull away. There we go. And we're going to slide. Notice the little hole here. That little hole is going to align with the hole on the side of the mount rail. I'm going to take our jet wash deflector and slide it in. When it comes to a stop, you know, see it comes to a definitive stop there, your pin will align with that hole going to pass through both parts, so the mount rail as well as the leg. Once you get it passed through, take your locking clevis and slide it over. It's going to engage the pin on the opposite side. And something too important to note, I want to point this out here. See right here, there is a portion of the locking clevis and the pin that's sticking out there. We want to make double sure that there is about a half an inch passing through. So yeah, about a half inch of that pin passing out the other side. So that you've got real good protection from that locking clevis uh, coming loose on its own. We don't want that to come loose. It's intentionally difficult to get it on and off. See, about a half an inch sticking out there. All right, ready to go surfing. Now, you want to take it off. Just grab the pin. You're going to want to pull away while at the same time you're pulling tension on the locking clevis itself. Pull the pin out. Opposite side, you want to pull away. At the same time you're pulling pressure against the locking clevis here. It's intentionally, again, made to be difficult to get it on and off because we want this thing to stay on. We don't want it unlocking itself. Slide the part out, store it wherever you might, uh, whatever storage compartment you want to put it in. And that's a complete install. Jet wash deflector mount rails as well as the jet wash deflector. All right, well that about wraps up your jet wash deflector install. For information about how to actually use your jet wash deflector, uh, check out our YouTube channel. There's tons of video content there that shows you how to set up your ballast, ballast placement, uh, water depths, wind conditions, all the things you're going to need to know to go surfing and have a lot of fun. Hopefully the jet wash deflector helps to get you there. We appreciate you watching this video today. For more information about jet wash deflector, visit us at jetboatpilot.com. You can also reach out to us through the contact us page, obviously Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube, any of those social media channels. Be glad to help you with any questions that you might have. If you like the content you've seen here today and you'd like to have more information from us on a regular basis, just click the notification bell and also the like button below, subscribe button, and uh, you'll get content from us uh, as we drop new content. It's always jet boater centric specifically for jet boaters. Uh, that's, that's kind of our content and how, how we do things. So uh, anyway, uh, it's what we're passionate about. It's what we love to do. So we appreciate you watching this video today. We hope it was helpful to you. Thanks. Have a great day.